Happy Saturday, Risers. We hope you're having a phenomenal weekend. Sagar and I are back with some of our favorite moments from the week. That's right. To start us off, we've got a clip of Jeff Stein, friend of the show, White House economics reporter for The Washington Post. He outlined his argument in favor of stimulus checks, and it's a hot-button issue as Joe Biden prepares his own stimulus package. Let's take a listen. The checks are incredibly popular politically, and they reach a ton of very poor people who are outside of um, the UI systems. We had a story recently that over a million people, I think that's probably a low ball estimate, over a million people do not qualify for unemployment benefits because you know the unemployment systems are rickety, they um, exclude a lot of people who should qualify, and the checks are really a way around that for a lot of people. And mm -hmm. more to the point, there was this amazing study that came out um, from ITEP, a sort of left-leaning democratic aligned think tank, but reputable, and, and they found that for the poorest fifth of Americans, um, the $2,000 stimulus checks would increase their overall income for the entire year by 30%. Wow. Hmm. And That's I think, you know, if you're, if you have a high income, it, you know, $2,000 check may not sound like that much and it may not be that much to you, but for the bottom fifth of the country, this is a 30% boost to their income. So it's dramatically politically popular. Yep. It's actually super substantive and important. It has bipartisan support, and Democrats, of course, are already screwing it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but it looks like something is going to happen. And whatever the extent of that is, we are going to keep you updated here on the show. Co-host of the Bad Faith podcast, Brianna Joy Grace, she also joined us this week. She focused on another major issue that the Biden administration is going to be grappling with, student debt specifically and student debt cancellation in particular. Here she is arguing the importance of complete student debt cancellation for people of all socioeconomic backgrounds. We're talking about the people who hold the really extraordinary amounts of debt. You know, the average American holds uh, $30,000 worth of debt. Black women hold more than any other group. Women hold two thirds of debt, right? But when you're talking about who has the really colossal six figure debt, often people say, well, those are doctors and lawyers, it doesn't really matter. But we've been on a years long now discourse about why it is that there's not um, more diversity in the medical profession something that really would help with respect to the maternal mortality rates and other health disparities you see across the country. Why do we have so many, so much difficulty getting people to go and staff rural hospitals? Well, part of the reason is that doctors and dentists in particular frequently graduate with something like $400,000 worth of debt. If you have $400,000 worth of debt, even if you're making a good salary at a seven or 8% interest rate, like many of us have, what that means is that your debt can grow colossally and you are going to choose the financial incentive and go to the big city and make as much money as you can instead of serving your community. Yeah, it's a really good point from Brianna. Just about, but see, this is part of the problem I have is that just student debt relief is not going to solve any of that because you have the entire stack, so to speak, yeah. that you have to go through. That means you have to like reform the medical system, reform like hospital, reform billing, which makes up you know salary, and then reform the debt process, and then reform the schools themselves. So we have a whole mess whenever it comes. This is part of the problem with our healthcare system and it's such a mess. Oh, it's like it goes rotten, all the way from the root. to its core. Yeah. I read an article this week yeah. about how colonoscopies, which, you know, all of our parents mm -hmm. suffer through and all of us at one point in our life will be forced to, like, you had told that we have to do this. There's this, like, much simpler, less invasive test that you can do at home and submit a sample, but guess what? It's less profitable. So they've decided to go with this, like, horribly uncomfortable, you have yeah, to drink the right. stuff and prep for it, and it's this horrific procedure because they can make more money on it. I mean, that's actually barbaric, and it's so emblematic of the entire healthcare system. On student debt relief, obviously, I am in support of it, but I do think that you have to pair it with something that's also going to dramatically benefit non-college educated people, and I think being able to do both will, is what really makes that a successful policy. I completely agree with you. And finally, Corbin Trent, he joined us to discuss how the PAC he founded and directs called No Excuses plans to hold Democrats accountable once Biden's in office. Let's take a listen. So the name No Excuses, I think, sort of says a little bit about what we're thinking, and that is that uh, every time Democrats get into power, they come up with a lot of excuses of why they can't do the thing they would love to do to help the American people. Um, and I think uh, it's important that we have an entity. In this case, we're going to have a, we got this pack that's going to be able to run ads and and sort of shine lights on those excuses and why those uh, aren't valid. You know, 
even if it, you know, we we talked a little bit, we work with a group uh, called New Consensus, which is a think tank that's doing some work too uh, on what can be done around uh, policies. And one of the things that they highlighted a few months ago is that even without the Senate, there's a lot of things that Biden can do. So the fact is, is that they're, you know, with the Senate majority, even as slim as it is, there's a lot that can be done to help the American people uh, that can get us building back better. I mean, that's, you know, the that's their own plan, right? Build back better. So we just want to help uh, hold Democrats accountable to the plans and the promises they've made uh, and make sure that uh, Democrats like Manchin, these sort of fringe right-wing Democrats, uh, aren't able to get in the way. Yeah. Corbin's former uh, spokesperson for AOC. And if you think about one thing that's different with this Democratic administration versus the Obama administration, like there weren't packs, like there was no pressure mm-hmm. coming from progressives inside or outside whatsoever. I shouldn't say whatsoever. There were some lonely voices out there, but yes. there was not remotely the infrastructure as burgeoning and sort of seedling as it still is, as there is in place now. Yeah, no, it's really important and we'll see how it works out. That does it for us. We're going to be back later today with the week that was in Media Screw Up. That's right. Hit the subscribe button. Don't miss any of our videos. Don't forget to like and share as well. Tomorrow, going to be back for another round of Hashtag Rising Cues. See you all then.